Hello everyone, it's CDA9 for 581 here, but you can call me CDA. Add-ons can't do everything, and there are some things that commands can do better than add-ons, so it's very beneficial if you can run commands through add-ons. In this video, we are going to be learning a few different methods to run a command with items. So, without wasting too much of your time, let's just get started. On screen right now is a list of timestamps that you can use to jump around to whatever method seems most interesting to you. After going over some of the general limitations of running commands through add-ons, we're going to go and cover a few different methods of doing so. Each method will also have its own drawbacks, so we're going to cover those, and then that will allow you to decide which one is best for you. This video assumes that you already have a basic understanding of how add-ons work, how to set up the manifest, how to set up the item files, all we're going to do is make a few tweaks to it and maybe add a few bits of files or code to make it detect and trigger commands when you're using the item in the way you want. Additionally, the workspace in which I'm going to be working in, I will not be covering how to set that up. You have to go do your own research. If you want some resources, I'll link some in the description. You can also browse my channel. I'll have some other videos in the future. And in general, just search the web and you'll find information on what I'm doing. You can also ask in the comments, you can ask in other communities, or you can ask anywhere you can get a hold of me, which I have a list linked in the description. Running commands through add-ons has a few general limitations as to what you can or cannot do that you need to be aware of. In this video, I will be covering two of them, but if there are more, then I will be sure to update the pinned comments. One of the big differences between running commands between add-ons and command blocks is the lack of conditional commands. You aren't able to test if the previous command was successful in order to run the next one. There might be a few workarounds for some of them, but not for all of them, so you have to be aware of this. Another big difference between running commands through add-ons and command blocks is the lack of timing. This is actually possible with animations, but we are not going to be getting into that, we're only using animation controllers maximum, so we're not going to cover this, but I may have a tutorial about this in the future. The first three methods that I will cover are going to be very similar to one another, so we will be setting them all up together so that we can easily go and just modify a little bit to do whatever we want. So anyway, what we want to do is we want to go into our behavior pack folder and create a new folder inside called Entities. Now, all of these three methods modify what's known as the player.jsln file, which, if you know, this is a very important file because it defines how a player behaves, and it could fail to work because if there are other packs that modify the player files, it's possible that this won't be compatible with other packs, so you always have to be aware of that. So after you've created the entities file, you want to go into the vanilla behavior pack and then go into the entities folder there. And then you want to find the player.jsln file and you want to copy that into the behavior pack. Then you need to create two objects inside this description. The first one is known as scripts and the other is known as animation. So what we are going to do is we're going to attach an animation controller to the player and that will be able to detect much of what we're going to do. So in the scripts, you want to create another array known as animate. You can specify a whole list of names and stuff. For now, I'm just going to name it hold item. After that, go into the animations object and then what you defined here, hold underscore item, you want to define over here as well. And then this time the value will be controller.animation, and then something that's unique to you, and you have to be sure it won't conflict with anything else. Typically I do a namespace, but since this is for quick demonstration, I'm just going to do hold underscore item because there's nothing it's going to conflict with. After that, be sure to save your file, and then go into the behavior pack again, create another folder known as animation underscore controllers. Inside here, create another file. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to just name it holdItem.jsln. And this is basically where everything will be contained. So again, start it with the object and then format underscore version. This is 1.12.0. So that's the latest one. Afterwards, animation underscore controllers is the next object. And then inside, you create another object with the name that you define. So controller.animation.holdItem. And make that an object. And then initial state, set that to something like default. I'll explain states in an animation controller video dedicated. Anyway, create a states object and then default is what we need 
transitions basically allows you to transition to another state this is an array and then you want to create another object inside this define name so maybe hold and this is going to be the name of another state after that, you need to define a condition in which to transition to it. This one will be query.getEquippedItemName. And then you can optionally specify main underscore hand or off underscore hand. Or alternatively, zero is main hand and one is off hand as well. So without these, it'll be either one, but we're going to do zero for now. And then equals, two equal signs test for equal value. Equal sets a value, so be sure that it's two equal signs. Now this, we have an item over here, and this doesn't require experimental gameplay. This is our namespaced identifier, right? So basically it's looking for an identifier, but without the namespace. So without this namespace, so it'll just be no exp that we are putting in here. Be sure to encase this in single quotes, because this is a string. But do not do double quotes, because by doing so, then that creates an entire other catastrophe of problems. So just stick like this. Afterwards, you want to create another state called hold, because that's what we defined right here. And this is again an object. Inside here, let's set a way to get back to the default state. Now you could do 1.0 which would instantly go back, but then it's gonna spam you with commands. So what we can actually do instead is query.get underscore equipped underscore item underscore name zero again, not equals no exp. That means you're not holding that item. And then we can do either on entry, which is an array, on exit, which is an array, or animations, I believe, which is also another array. On entry, basically specify commands to run when you enter the state. On exit, specifies when you exit the state. Behavior pack animations, and that's a different topic that I'll get into in another video. Here, you can run as many commands as you want. So for instance, this one, you do need to add a slash at front, and then you can run basically any command. So slash say, so basically, this is just going to say that we entered the hold state. Now, basically, you can over here add other queries, which we're going to get into right after this. But now we can test, so we can go into Minecraft. And then over here, I've already created a world that will automatically apply my changes. You do not need experimental for this method, but it is marked as experimental since I'm having both experimental items and non-experimental items to use to demonstrate throughout this entire tutorial. Alright, so once we jump in, we see we have this non-experimental item here. And then, when we move over to hold it, it says right here, Hi, we entered the hold state. Now when we leave it, it says, Hi, we left the hold state. So when, only when we're holding this, it's gonna say that. After you can run commands while holding an item, we can take it one step further and do it when we're left-clicking the item. Basically, there's a variable that's called variable.attackTime. The concept is, when you're left-clicking, you're attacking. Now, unfortunately, because you can't attack or swing whenever you want on mobile, this doesn't work reliably, so there's an issue that you need to be aware of. Anyway, what we can test is and. Two ands mean this condition and the condition after, so variable dot attack underscore time. This is a built-in variable for all entities. Anyone that can do close-up attacks can do this. So basically, we don't need to test if it's equal to something or if it's like greater than zero or something. When you're not attacking, it's equal to zero. And based on what's known as truthy and falsy, truthy would mean it's not zero. Zero is basically false. So in the same concept, we can do not variable dot attack underscore time. And that would mean that when this is equal to zero, so two of these would mean or, and then an exclamation mark is not. So when we're holding the item and we're attacking, in this case, left clicking, then transition to left click. But when we're either not holding the item or we're not attacking, then transition back because we've left. So now we can load in again and we can test it. Now when I do left click, you'll notice that although there's some lag, it's now rendered that, oh hey, we entered the state, and then we just left the state. If we do it again, 
it does it again. To take this up a step further, we can now detect if we're right-clicking the item. So now we can go over here, and we have to do two files. We need to do this file, and we also need to do this file. So basically, the concept is we're using the item which on computers and stuff, that's right click. There it's a query, which we can add real quick. Query dot is underscore using underscore item. But we haven't specified when and how we use the item. So when you do try to right click, you're not actually using the item just yet. We actually need to add two components to an item. So the first one is Minecraft use underscore duration. And you can set this to whatever you want. I recommend setting it to something super high so you don't accidentally eat it. We're making a Minecraft food component, which basically allows you to eat the item or simulate it. So can always eat be, so this is set to true. And then there's also unfortunately a bug going on that prevents this from working properly in multiplayer, where only the host can actually eat custom foods, anyone else can't. I'll put the bug up on screen and in the description if you want to go upload it. But basically that's what we need to add, and over here, query dot is using item, which is basically if we're using the item. So then we can switch back over to Minecraft. Now this time we can try to eat it. And it says, hi, we entered the right click state. It said, hi, we write the right click state. Yeah, I did a search and replace. So I did search and replace for left and replaced it with right. So it should be hi, we left the right click state. When we right click, it enters this and we, we stop right clicking it leaves. But again, there's a bug, so unfortunately, this won't work on multiplayer. Building off what we just did, you can also do other queries. Personally, I really like doing query is jumping and query is sneaking. This would work on multiplayer because you're not trying to eat it, and also it would work on mobile because you're not attacking. So again, you can play around with a ton of different queries. Maybe if you're in a certain biome it would only work. I'm just throwing ideas around here. But you can actually go into the Minecraft documentation and they have an entire list. I'll link down in the description. The final method that I will cover in this tutorial will involve experimental items. Now this has a new component and a bunch of other new stuff that makes running commands super easy. However, the biggest drawback is that right now, as of recording, this is currently locked behind experimental and requires holiday creator features to be enabled. If you don't have that enabled, the item won't register. So basically what you want to do is do Minecraft on use and to can trigger an event. Inside, this is an object. There's another object known as on underscore use. Here, we can specify an event. Then you can create an object if you have not done so already, known as events and then an object with this. And then you can do what's known as a run command event response. There are other responses as well that you're free to play around with. But for sake of simplicity, we're just gonna cover this. There's a documentation and there's other stuff that I can link in the description as well. Anyway, run underscore command is what we're interested in. This is an object and then command. Now this, as far as I know, this can be a string or this can be an array of different commands. So we're gonna just do an array. Do not add a slash at the beginning. Do not do this. So just do this. And then we can go over here, back into Minecraft, and if you look, I have holiday creator features enabled over here, and this is required for items to work. Once inside this world, we can switch over to this experimental item, and when we right click, then it's gonna say this. We can hold it and it will, again, do it a bunch, but when you use it, it's gonna run. Now, if you don't want it to hold and all that, you can set a Minecraft cooldown component, but I'll leave that experimentation up to you. I could tell you since I've done it before. So anyway, with that, thank you all for watching this video. That's all I have for today. Again, I'm saying this out of order because I'm terrible at outros, but again, Thank you for watching. If you've learned something, then great. If you haven't, then feel free to ask questions. Or like, if you already know this, then why are you watching? But anyway, again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, feedback in general, feel free to ask wherever you can find me. 
And again, that's all I have for today. So thank you all. And I'm being very repetitive.